I started working in uh, research and uh, therefore uh, looking at health literacy in schools, looking uh, at health literacy of students, of teachers, of school principals and in the whole school setting is something I really, really think is important and I'm really passionate about. And therefore, on my first slide, I just want to begin right away to show why I believe, based on the evidence that we gathered, health literacy is so important to schools. So we did for the Schools for Health in Europe Network Foundation. I'm sure that many of you know this network, the SHE Network. We did a report and an evidence synthesis and collected studies that have been conducted on health literacy in the school setting. And based on that evidence, we developed uh, a model, which I will be introducing now, that shows that health literacy of students is associated, so the higher the health literacy is associated with positive health-related attitudes and behavior. So when the health literacy is higher, health behavioral outcomes are also better than in children, in adolescents, in students with lower levels of health literacy. And we also could see based on these studies that health-related attitudes and behavior directly have an effect on the health status, the health condition of children and adolescents. And if we follow that chain, we can see that the health status of the school students is directly related to school and educational outcomes, both on the short and midterm and long term. So you see that there is an indirect relationship between health literacy through behavior, through health status on education, which is what makes health literacy so important uh, to schools because healthy children learn better, healthy children um, get better health outcomes and schools are more likely to accomplish their goals to um, provide education. And in this sense, we can say that health literacy is a determinant of health behavior. And what we also know is that education is a determinant based on all the studies that are available out there for the past 40 to 50 years, a determinant of all things that are related to health. So you see why health literacy is affecting uh, education or health is affecting education. Education has also an effect on health. Based on the studies that led to these models, we could also see that it is not only about the behavioral or the competence or the literacy components that are so important in this chain, because every child comes from a home and every home is different and we have to we have to account for the differences in the children's home and the socioeconomic background so there is a different family affluence different cultural background with different cultural capital that is available or different educational uh, and social capital that is available for example in um, the parents and also uh, the state of development so these are preconditions so called structural environmental or context related factors that have an impact on health literacy. And as I just shown you, health literacy then has an effect on different health outcomes, which vice versa have then an impact on education. So this is the evidence based from two th around 2020. And in the past years, a lot of new projects have started here uh, at my working group, but also in the working groups of many other colleagues around the world. So probably in the next years, we will be adding new evidence to this model. And now I want to show you, based on the literature that you can see on the right-hand side, why health literacy, in particular in children and adolescents and in context of school, is so important. Because lower levels of health literacy in children and adolescents are associated with a series of adverse health outcomes. For example, children with lower health literacy have also less health knowledge, they more often practice unhealthy behaviors such as smoking, alcohol consumption, they do less physical activity, et cetera, et cetera. They also have more problems with health communication or in handling and managing 
health information. They have a problematic or a more problematic social media use compared to children with higher levels of health literacy and also problems in critical health thinking, poor academic performance, poor self-esteem, and of course, very importantly, poor physical and mental health outcomes. So altogether, this already makes health literacy a very important topic to be addressed as early as in childhood and as early as in schools. But on top comes that lower levels of health literacy um, are also associated with a lower socioeconomic background, meaning that we have a social gradient in low health literacy, making health literacy an important health target, an important intervention target, an important school target in context of health equity and health inequalities. So promoting health literacy will also help to overcome some barriers, some shortcomings related to um, health equity. So you see, these are some of the important facts why it is so important to address um, health literacy alongside other school subjects, alongside other school topics in context of health promotion and health prevention in the school setting. And in 2021, we have worked together with the WHO Regional Office for Europe, the, public, the, the Child and Adolescents Public Health Department, on a report on health literacy in the school setting in context of well-being of children and adolescents. And of course, I cannot summarize the whole report. You can download it on the WHO website, but I have brought some uh, important facts from um, the report. So first of all, of course, based on the uh, issues that I just raised, health literacy has to be understood as a core public health issue when it comes to children and adolescents. And we believe that addressing health literacy is important and that schools as formal educational settings where you can strengthen educational, social, cultural, emotional and further competencies is so important to help children to acquire the necessary competences that are needed in context of health, to empower them to share and promote skills for them to be able to make informed decisions about health and become agents of their own health. So these are some of the reasons why we believe that schools are so important. They reach all the children for a very long amount of time, making schools the ideal setting for interventions. No matter what kind of background um, children have, you can reach them all. And we have also in this report um, identified some core skills that we believe are very important in context of health literacy. For example, accessing and navigating health information environments, understanding health messages in particular in social media, false claims, fake news, commercial determinants of health, etc. Through health literacy, children will also be come competent to think critically right about uh, health claims they encounter in their daily lives and they can also make informed decisions about health based on their health literacy they can acquire new health knowledge and use that knowledge in new health situations so they can make a translation of what they learned to new life circumstances they can also take part in communication about health using health behavior developing healthy practices and healthy behaviors and healthy attitudes and they can also engage in healthy activities and avoid unnecessary health risk which is very important but they can also become aware of their own thinking and their behaving when it comes to health they can for example also identify identify and assess bodily signals from feelings, from symptoms. They can act ethically and socially responsible towards themselves, towards others, and towards the society. And from the educational perspective, the teacher, the school perspective, of course, it is very important. We just learned that healthy at school children um, have better health outcomes. Of course, true health literacy, then we can also address learning. The children become lifelong learners, self-directed learners, and increase their um, educational outcomes, their educational achievement, their educational aspirations. And they can also develop a sense of citizenship based on the model of health literacy that you are looking at. And last but not least, we have already talked about health literacy in context of health inequalities. True health literacy based on the models that are available out there. Children 
become competent in order to understand that there are factors outside the personal competences, outside their own behavior that have an impact on health literacy so that they can address and mitigate the effects of the social, the commercial, the digital, the ecological, the cultural and political determinants of health. So this is very important because maybe also probably one of the most important things that health literacy enables children to do to act on the determinants of health. So we can consider health literacy in the context in the realm of health promotion and prevention as a determinants-based approach. And if you would ask me to summarize these many competences, these many components of health literacy, I would break, break it down to three main components that I believe that make up health literacy altogether. First is health literacy is about the competent management and handling of health information. So dealing with health information is always in the focus of health literacy. Second is communication and interaction about health topics. So it's dealing about health information and communicating about health information. And last but not least, and very important, through health literacy, information, knowledge, attitudes can be translated right into um, practices into behavior, into action. So it's about translating the acquired knowledge, the gained skills to make informed decision and practice healthy behaviors. And so these three areas are the most important areas in context of health literacy. And I want to show you one definition that has been widely used, it has been developed in the context of public health, but it is based on an analysis and an evidence synthesis of many definitions out there and represents what all the other definitions have in common. And it describes health literacy as linked to literacy, so reading, writing, numeracy, etc., and that it entails people's knowledge, their motivational and competencies to access, understand, appraise, and apply health information in order to make judgments and take decisions regarding different areas of health, such as health promotion, disease prevention, and healthcare. So this is an, a definition of health literacy, which very well represents how I, for example, would understand what health literacy is all about and how I would uh, address health literacy in the school setting. From the health promotion perspective, there is also a different way of conceptualizing health literacy. Still based on the same definition that I have shown you, you can also distinguish health literacy into three different dimensions, functional, interactive, communicative, and critical health literacy. And as you can see at the bottom, we have the functional skills, yeah, the reading skills, the writing skills, understanding, uh, mathematical, numeracy skills, etc. And in the interactive area, it's more about talking about health, interacting about health, communicating about health, taking part in social and community actions, etc. And on the highest level, it's all about um, appraising, evaluating, judging about health information, but also to understanding that there are determinants of health which can be addressed and modified in order for the health benefit of oneself or others. And all these different understandings and models and definitions that I've just shown you uh, seem to define health literacy as a behavioristic, a behavioristic approach. But on the contrary, health literacy is not only to be reduced on behavioralistic or comp um, co competence-related uh, factors. In fact, health literacy has to be understood as a relational concept. And this is what this figure shows. On the left-hand side, where we have the behavioral level, the personal knowledge areas, the abilities, and the competencies, this is where we would place personal health literacy, where the action level is on the agency level, and it's all about behavior change of individuals. And this is also where the definition that I have just shown you is rooted. But as you can see, in health literacy, we have two sides of the same coin, and all, both of them need to be addressed. On the right-hand side, you have the environmental level with the systemic demands and the complexities put upon people. And this is where we have to address the structures and the social change in contrast to agency and behavior change. This is also where we have a systems level 
a systems approach and the organizational health literacy. And you can see at the bottom a definition for organizational health literacy. And when you read it, you can see that it is complementary to the personal health literacy definition. And in fact, an organization that is health literate helps people to develop their full potential regarding their personal health literacy. But it also helps, and this is what you see on the right hand side when it comes to interventions and measures to be implemented in a setting, to decrease the complexity and the demands of a system or of organizations or institutes or settings put upon people. Where in contrast on the left hand side, when you look at the behavioral level, it's more about improving and enhancing personal um, capacities, competencies, and knowledge areas. And you, you can see that how these two areas need to come together. When you look at interventions or think about interventions, in particular from a teacher perspective, in order to increase the personal level of health literacy, you can do it by uh, targeted education programs, classroom action, whole of school action, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas on the right-hand side, when you aim at the organizational level, the, the environmental level, it's more about targeting the organization, the environment as a whole, the determinants of health, and also to reduce situational demands and optimize interaction in the setting and increase institutional support. And it's, you have to understand this as a as a as a concept as an approach health literacy that needs to be brought into balance the balance between the behavioral and the environmental level so you see it is not only about um a reductionist an individualistic or a behavioral approach it is an whole for when you look at school, whole school approach or a whole of systems approach to health literacy, which makes health literacy so important and so unique. And on this slide, I uh, brought you a slide from my colleague, um, Lena Packery from the HBSC, the WHO Health Behavior in School Age Children study. Um, this is a study which is being conducted in uh, European countries on uh, health and health behavior of children. And sometimes they also measure health literacy here. And you can see um, different European countries and the state of health literacy. And I don't want to dive into, into detail because this, um, these results also have informed our evidence and thesis, but you can clearly see that there is a difference between the levels of health literacy between different countries, while some such as uh, Macedonia or Finland are doing rather well when you look at the red or the light green area, other countries or most of the countries are not doing so good. For example, you can start Estonia, Slovakia, England, Germany, Austria, Czech Republic and Turkey where the um, um, proportion of school children with lower levels of health literacy is rather high and also uh, only few uh, children and adolescents uh, really um, achieve to um, have very high levels of health literacy. So you see, based on this figure, um, there is actually a lot to do when it comes um, to health literacy. These are children 15 and 17 years old, so um, older adolescents. But health literacy is also important in younger school students. And we have um, conducted in different projects of our health literacy in childhood and adolescence research consortium studies in primary schools on health literacy um, in the fourth, in fourth graders, eight, nine, 10, and 11 years old. And what you see here are the most recent results of a study that we wanted to conduct in 2020. But because of the corona pandemic and school closures, the pandemic impact on the whole educational settings, um, we couldn't finish the study. So we are at the moment as we are speaking, redoing that survey um, because now the situation um, has, I, I wouldn't say it has cleared, but it is much better. It's not that worse uh, as it has been in the years 2020 and 2021 and earlier in 2022. So sometimes early next year, we will uh, have finished the study and have a representative data set. But what you see here is the sample that we have, that we were able to collect in 2020. Uh, and we uh, could survey 515 school children 
in a representative center, uh, sample in primary schools in the state of North Rhine-Westphalia, which is one of 16 federal states. And you can see here a very similar result um, to that of um, the adolescents from the HBSC study. While 76% of the children state that they uh, find it easy or rather easy uh, to deal and manage health information, you have a force, so 24% percent of the children stating that they find it rather difficult or very difficult to deal with uh, information. So this result is a bit better than the result that we have uh, seen in adolescence. And we can ask the question, is it that children that young are um, more competent, do know more, have really higher levels of health literacy, or are there probably other reasons in place why children in that age group report because we are surveying health literacy using a self-report questionnaire, higher levels of health literacy than their adolescence counterparts. And there are different ways to, of approaching to explaining why we, um, why we end up with such a good results of health literacy of young children. First of all, they are very young. Probably they underestimate the complexities of the healthcare sector or the complexities when it comes to health promotion. They maybe also lack the experience interacting in health matters, uh, taking care of their own health. Probably it is mostly the, the parents that do um, everything related to health prevention, health promotion, health care when it comes to their children. And it could also be that they overestimate their own competencies when it comes to health literacy. So you see there are different ways of trying to approach to explain why we have these results. But uh, compared to results that we have in adolescence, where they are a bit more mature, a bit more experienced, we can say that there are um, much more different uh, results that one can generate when it comes to health literacy of children and adolescents. But interestingly, we could see that health literacy of children in this, in this study that we have conducted in the primary school is the strongest predictor for a series of health outcomes. For example, mental and well-being outcomes, physical health, subjective health status, and also health behavior. So this is a finding that we could already see in the model that we have produced for schools for health in Europe. And this is a study that we have conducted later, later than we have developed the model. And you can see we get really similar results on that. So despite the fact that health literacy, that the children report that they have not so many problems, so much or are so big of problems in dealing with health information, you can see here some selected items with action areas where they state to have more difficulties when it comes to dealing with uh, information than other items. For example, how to find out uh, to recover quickly when they have a cold or understand when and how they should take a medicine when they are ill or judge what helps a lot to stay healthy and what does not, what does not help so much. So these are things where um, up to a third or even more than a third of the children state that these are particular tasks that they found are difficult to undertake. And since we are still in the midst of the corona pandemic, I think these results will be um, highly relevant because these are the first results ever to be generated in children on corona-specific health literacy. We did some studies with adults here in Germany, in, in Austria, in, in Switzerland, and in the COVID health literacy network, We have where we have more than 70 countries that are members of the networks have conducted um, a lot of studies in different settings, in different countries, on different dimensions of health literacy. They haven't been done so far in children, in particular not in children as young as in primary school age. And you can see here that we have a total different picture from the picture that we have seen on the general health literacy. So you see that their corona, that they have much more problems in dealing with corona-specific um, health information compared to general health information. For example, almost half of the children find it very difficult to find information about the coronavirus or understand what they read or hear about uh, the coronavirus. They also have problems in deciding which information on the coronavirus is reliable and which not. And this in particular is so important in the age of the internet, digital realm, so social media, commercial determinants that all have an impact on 
our children and on their understanding of health information and how they make informed um, decisions. So as I said, this study is uh, being repeated as we speak under very different circumstances uh, than we had in 2020 and 2021. And I hope that sometimes early next year, we will finish the study and we'll be able uh, to present um, a much broader uh, data set, much broader evidence on health literacy of primary school children. But altogether, these aspects made it clear, make, make it clear for me and maybe also to many of you that in order to sustainably address health literacy on an early age, one of the very, very important uh, uh, um, life stages is when children reach the school age, when they enter the educational system, when they start attending school from first grade on. And there are different aspects uh, that you can address, and I will um, dive into them uh, in detail later on. But first of all, I will uh, show you why it is so important to address health literacy as early uh, as possible in the life course. This is what this figure shows. When you address interventions in adulthood, the impact is rather small, so you cannot change much, whereas when you address it early, the impact is much higher, especially when it comes to uh, aspects that are related to cognitive, social, cultural, emotional development, such as competency uh, development. So you have a far greater effect if you address health literacy early. In schools, I mean, schools are already um, the main task of schools is to promote competencies, is to promote knowledge, attitudes, positive uh, behaviors, educational uh, attitudes and aspiration, etc. And they have the professional capacity, the teachers, the principals, the other pedagogical and non-pedagogical staff working in a school. Uh, their main task is to exactly address uh, children's uh, development in terms of education, but also this is very relevant to health and also to the development, the early and sustainable development of health literacy. But, and there is always a but, challenges and barriers people encounter, maybe you will also encounter them when trying to address health literacy in schools, and there are many. For example, health literacy is a rather new topic. Not everybody in a school context knows about health literacy or understands immediately what health literacy is or how health literacy is different from other uh, concepts such as um, health skills or health knowledge or life skills or general skills or health behavior, etc. So you see, we have a new concept and we need to make clear that we try to explain to people in detail, very hands-on, probably also by using a very plain plain and hand-on language, what health literacy is. On top costs comes that um, there is a mandatory cur curriculum in schools. There are a lot of educational policies, but there are almost none for health literacy. So you will probably, when you look at the education systems in the world, one, two, or three educational curricula, educational policies supporting health literacy in schools. And in many countries, in my country, in Germany, it, in, in it is the case there is no mandatory health education and health education is the subject which leads to health literacy. So health literacy is a learning outcome of health education. And in many countries, there is no health education in place in school, which makes it uh, much more difficult to address it. And then even if you would be able to bring health literacy to schools, the school curriculum is already overcrowded, right? So there are so many topics that are being addressed in school. Uh, it might be in many cases, it is in fact difficult to introduce uh, new topics because there is no time to address these new topics, in particular if they are not part of the curriculum, because you will always as a teacher address that what is in the curriculum and mandatory to address. And I believe that many of you, many educational systems will face these barriers, similar barriers and challenges. But uh, there are ways and mechanisms how to overcome this. And one is, for example, to look in a, 
in a certain country in the curriculum and try to see what kind of concepts, what kind of learning goals, competencies, educational frameworks are addressed. Maybe there is something in there that is related or linked or similar to health literacy. And when you um, when you remember what health literacy is, is it, it's about uh, finding, understanding, um, um, evaluating, using health information, making decisions, communication, critical thinking, etc., etc. Et so these kind of issues are very important to health literacy. And when you go to your curriculum and try to identify concepts that address them, maybe there is something that you can use to promote health literacy, something that is already in the mandatory curriculum. For example, in Germany, we have screened the curriculum in one of our projects, Tool Health Literacy, and we could identify the curriculum on digital education. And this is what you see here. It has six um, competence areas, six dimensions. And when you have a closer look, this is a mandatory curriculum, right? So on the federal level, it is called digital literacy, the mandatory curriculum on digital literacy. And since we are a federal state with 16 federal uh, states, and education is the responsibility of the state. So it is not the federal government who tells the states what to address in education, but the responsibility of the state government. And on the state level, this digital literacy curriculum is being translated with the term media literacy. So just for you to know, digital literacy and uh, media literacy in this context are used interchangeably. And when you have a closer look to this curriculum, you will clearly see that in the three areas where I have put the arrows to, clearly health literacy can be addressed. Yeah, you see information and seeking skills are there, communication is there, uh, presentation, so kind of interaction is there, analyzing, reflecting, evaluating is there. And uh, digital literacy doesn't come, or media literacy doesn't necessarily come with a topic. When you have to address it in the classroom, you can decide yourself what kind of topic uh, do you want to use for this and in, in the case you decide to use something like this and use health as a topic and address these dimensions then you will become able to address health literacy and the good thing about school curricula is always that they are um, uh, comprehensive so they are addressing much more, much more things that are but that are very important. For example, here you can see use and operate media. Yeah, you can address health literacy in context of media. Address uh, using hardware. What are devices, uh, digital tools to organize yourself in digital context, but also about important things like as data protection and security, which become very, very important in the age of the internet and social media. And so is on the right hand side information and technology, the area of problem solving and modeling where it's a lot about algorithms understanding that for example when they access social media platforms such as twitter youtube or all the other platforms that in the background there are certain algorithms that are responsible to bringing some messages up um, and probably also attached with commercial interest, etc., all based on uh, some sort of algorithms that we often don't see but they are there and they have their effects so you can see these kinds of model, and I'm sure that in many of the European countries, there are similar curricula available that you can use to address um, health literacy. So based on this curriculum, we have developed uh, the toolbox health literacy, which is a, a classroom uh, manual to strengthen health literacy. It has different uh, dimensions. For example, it addresses um, different health uh, behaviors, but also how children can uh, deal with social media, health information, fake news, conspiracy theories with COVID-19, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And always the focus is on health information. And the good thing about this um, about this information, by the way, it is uh, open access, and you can just download it on our website. It's in German, but you can, for example, use Google Translator or DeepL to translate it. And if you're interested, you can also um, translate uh, the whole curriculum. And the good thing about these kind of approaches, when you look at the challenges, it directly responds to these challenges. For example, yeah, it is new to schools, but this is kind of helping to introduce it. It is um, 
there is no mandatory curriculum, but here we can see it is integrated into an existing mandatory curriculum. So it links a topic, it links health literacy to a topic that is in the curriculum. So it is not an extra topic. You don't need extra time because digital literacy or media literacy is something you have to address anyway. This curriculum starts with grade one and goes in Germany through grade 13. In some other European countries, a school ends after 10 years or after 12 years here. You can use it for 13 years. So it is a very long period where you can make sure to address different contents based on the cognitive development of the children. Yeah, the early promotion. It has also uh, components for teacher training. So when um, a teachers um, familiarize themselves, they get the necessary teaching skills, the necessary health literacy skills to become competent to address health literacy in the classroom. And of course, I believe when I, um, when I look at the, the curricula of many other education systems in the, European, in the European region, I can see that similar curricula are available in these countries as well. And so it could easily be, they could, could easily be used uh, to address uh, health literacy. So probably in context of information literacy, media literacy, classroom li literacy on the classroom, uh, digital literacy on the classroom level for teacher education, or to address uh, phenomena like commercial determinants of health or the infodemic, which um, has impacted us in the past couple of years, information epidemic, which came along with the COVID uh, pandemic. And you can see the only thing one needs to do is to use these approaches, information media and digital literacy, and use health as a topic uh, just to um, make sure that what you do is health literacy. So, and I've talked a lot about um, the COVID pandemic, and I want to give you a practical example, if you wish, as case, a case study or a case example, what children in context of COVID-19 can do with health literacy. And here's a very brief uh, list. I've narrowed it down to the most relevant things. For example, through health literacy, they can acquire and use uh, knowledge about the coronavirus. And we have just seen from our, from our survey that there is a need on the children's side to exactly do, do that. They can understand health information and apply the behavioral recommendations for hygiene, hand washing, physical distancing, social distancing, face masking, getting vaccinated or getting tested. So it's very important for them. Also to participate in risk and health communication, right, on the interactive and communicative levels of health literacy. But they can also use health literacy to access different online sources for health information and evaluate online health information and sources. They can critically judge about information and sources, recognize this and misinformation, engage in fact checking on the internet or social media. And therefore they become aware of the infodemic and competent to navigate the infodemic or the commercial determinants of health, right? So you see, there is a, a practical value in the context of COVID-19 um, to address health literacy so far that you can say that health literacy is a social vaccine, right? It doesn't act on the biomedical vaccine level, of course, but when you take a social level, mobilization, um, health policies, health promotion action, uh, community empowerment, et cetera, et cetera, this is when health literacy can be used as a social uh, vaccine. So this would be like, COVID-specific or COVID-related health literacy. You can also look on health literacy in the schools from a mental health perspective. And in one of our other projects, we have in the IMPRESS project, which is about mental health literacy in the schools, we have adapted a Canadian curriculum. So you see there are other curricula available to address health literacy depending on what topic you're looking at, what region or what country or what context. And in Canada, there is this mental health and high school curriculum guide called the guide. Uh, we have translated it uh, to German and also did an implementation and evaluation pilot in uh, the past years. We, can, we, we are already doing, uh, we are at the moment doing the analysis, but based on initial results, we can already see that implementing uh, this um, intervention has positive effects on uh, mental health literacy of both children and 
um, teachers. So you can see you can also address health literacy in context of mental health promotion, in particular mental health literacy, for example, to address stigma and mental illness. So these are components of our intervention. Um, understanding mental health and mental mental illnesses, uh, the information on specific mental illnesses, experiences made, so there is a social and emotional component in, but you can also help students to become competent to seek for health in emergency cases and mental health cases, finding support, and also why it is so important to have a positive connotation, a positive picture of mental health in order to avoid shame, victim blaming, etc., cetera, um, et cetera. So you see, and all the interventions that I've just shown you, they are for both. They are for children, right, to strengthen their health literacy capacities on the behavioral level. But when you take the, the school perspective or a perspective towards the professionals to the children, you can address the teacher competences to help the children to develop better health literacy skills. So you are on the environmental, on the systemic level, on the other side of the relational uh, model. And how important the professionals in the educational setting are, such as yourself, the teachers, and maybe some of you are also uh, school principals, I will show you on the following slides. We have conducted uh, also some studies in school principals uh, before the pandemic and during uh, the pandemic. And here you see some results that we have um, um, generated during the pandemic. The health literacy, the overall health literacy is what you see in the um, um, highest bar, the overall health literacy. And you can see while 60% of the principals have very high health literacy, there is 40% of school principals stating that they have either inadequate or problematic health literacy with the evaluation, the appraisal dimension being the most difficult. So it's the same with in other adult-related uh, population health literacy studies, in adolescent health literacy studies, or children health literacy studies. Despite the fact that some individuals or whole populations have high levels of health literacy, they in fact always have problems uh, with appraising health information. And interestingly, in the different studies that we have conducted, we could find out that the higher level of health literacy in a school principal was always positively associated with more frequent implementation of school health promotion and prevention programs. So this alone makes health literacy of school principals a very important target, right? We have to promote to strengthen health literacy on school principals in context of child health. This is when we are on the right side of the relational models. And so this figure that you see here is just a different um, display of what I just uh, told you. The green, the green bars are uh, the school principals with the high health literacy, and you can see on the left-hand side, these are the student, the children-centered health promotion and prevention activities. In the middle, you see those directed as teachers or other school staff, and on the right-hand side, you see whole-of-school approaches. And in all them, you can see there is a, a greater implementation of these measures when the principals have high levels of health literacy. So you see how important they are, and you see also how important the environmental level of the health literacy concept is. And this brings me to my next project, health literate schools. This project aims at developing a concept for organizational health literacy of schools. And in fact, we did that in the past years. And at the moment, we are conducting a pilot survey in uh, Germany and preparing our manuals, our, our toolboxes, all the materials for the schools, etc. And in our uh, model, we have defined together with teachers, with principals, with other professionals from the education field, but also with researchers and policymakers, the eight standards of a health literate school. I won't read them all. I would just want to show you there are eight standards and except standard four and five, all the standards aim at the structural, at the environmental level of school. But of course, like every, um, like any structural health promotion or setting approach, we always also have behavior as a component. So we want to strengthen personal health literacy of students, but also health literacy of teachers and principals. I've just shown you how important that is. And probably sometimes also early next year, we will have the results. These materials are also open access. You can um, 
access them on our website and use them in your own context. And this is the definition of the health literate school. A health literate school enables everyone involved in this school, yeah, including the students, the teachers, the principals, the parents, everybody involved, to deal with and manage health information and to improve and reinforce health literate action and behavior. And you can see on the right hand side, the green definition, this is the original definition of organizational health literacy. And the, for schools, it is the organizational health literacy of schools. So I believe that this approach, the organizational health literacy approach of schools is a very important because it, uh, approach because it's a systemic um, setting based approach. And I also want to introduce you to an alliance, Alliance Health Literacy in Schools, which we have, which we have established in Germany, but also in the international context. Many organizations have uh, declared their interest uh, to work with us in this alliance and our main aim is to advance the evidence base. Remember the very first slide that I've shown you, our aim is to advance the evidence based uh, on health literacy, uh, develop strategies how to implement uh, health literacy in schools in different countries to create a knowledge base. And of course, the global alliance, yeah, we want to advocate for health literacy across countries in a school setting to increase the global awareness and also to build capacity. For example, uh, every, it's an open network, everybody can join us. And uh, I believe that these kinds of approaches, these kinds of networks and alliances are um, all hands on deck jobs. So the more people engage with it, the more likely it will be that will we accomplish our goals. So. And I have reached my last slides, my conclusions. Of course, health literacy is a very important topic for schools and education, both for the classroom, right, teaching the personal health literacy skills, but also in teacher training and addressing organizational health literacy of schools. So the structures, the demands, the determinants of health. And we have seen that principals are key actors in all this kind of health promotion and health literacy approach, but we also need educational policies supporting the school setting. We could also see that health literacy is very important to some important megatrends or challenges in health, such as NCDs, infectious disease, such as uh, COVID-19 in context of health promotion, but also the rise of the commercial determinants, the ecologic determinants, the digital determinants of health, right? And these are the things we have to keep in mind when we address health literacy. Thank you so much. And I hope that there is still time to have a proper discussion. Let me just stop my yes. screen sharing. Yes, there is. Thank you, first of all, um, Dr. Orkan, for the great talk. We do have a few questions for you. Um, the first one is, does increasing health literacy in school age children increase the proportion of kids that become interested in health related careers? Oh, can you can you repeat the question? Is, yes. is it in the chat box also? Can I? It's can also I... in the chat box as well. OK, but please just uh, just repeat it. Um, does increasing health literacy in school age children increase the proportion of kids that become interested in health related careers? Ah, so that they later become health professionals, medical or public health professionals themselves. Actually, as I said, health literacy in particular, health literacy in schools and in children is a rather new topic. And I don't know of any study that is pursuing this kind of research question. But of course, it would be very important to exactly conduct these kind of studies. For example, in adults, we see that there is that there are some associations, um, higher levels of health literacy in health professionals. So at least we can see that there is that there is something to it. And it would be interesting to see if there is any relationship between higher levels of health literacy in early age and uh, future career in the health sector. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, another question. Is there evidence showing a relationship between children's and adolescents health literacy and their parents health literacy? Uh, would it be interesting to work to improve the parents health literacy and to try and find the changes in the children's health literacy? Yeah, uh, totally. Uh, there are many studies available in particular in the uh, from the from the US, from North America on parental health literacy, even it's an it's a 
it has a name of its own, this field of uh, research, parental health literacy, maternal health literacy, paternal health literacy, when you look at mother's, father's health literacy, or the health literacy system um, 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 of the family system. And in fact, really, there, there is a relationship, and we know that parents and uh, mothers and fathers are the surrogate interface for their children to interact with the healthcare sector, with health professionals, and in terms of schools, also with the educational professionals. And it is worth investing in parental health literacy. It sure will also have an impact on children's uh, health development. For example, in the in the um, mom child and kids studies, this is the study in primary school children, we could see that there is a positive relationship between um, high levels of health literacy uh, and um, talking, so or let's, let's, let's phrase it differently, the ch those children with higher levels of health literacy also had more often um, talks, discussions with their children, uh, with their parents on health matters. Yeah? They were talking more with them or the parents were talking more with the children about health issues. So we can clearly see that parents are very important uh, to children's not only health, but also to their socialization, to their education, and to their proper and healthy development. Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, if they have more, they're talking about this in more places than just school. Yeah, of course, we can see a positive relationship. And the last question, um, is this is the Canadian Guide an open resource? Um, actually, in, in part, it is. You have to contact the office uh, in, in Canada to access it. It is already available in many, many languages. It has been translated really to a lot of contexts and a lot of countries, also in uh, Europe. But you just have to contact the office, uh, the Canadian office. Just search for the guide or the mental health curriculum or mental health literacy in Canada. Um, then you will easily find it on, on Google. And you have to contact uh, the office. This whole program um, was developed by Stanley Kutcher and team. He, he is a former professor in Canada. Now he's a senator. So now he, he's in politics in Canada. But his co-workers still work on it. And you just have to make contact with them. And I'm sure they will grant you access or point you to an already available translation in your country that you can use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as you can uh, see in the chat, I think uh, a lot of people really enjoyed this presentation and got a lot out of it. Uh, as my colleague uh, Maria Elena has already said in the chat, this will be uh, this webinar has been recorded and it will be uploaded to the uh, page on SEP. Um, and also, if you guys could please fill out the evaluation form that my colleague uh, will also share in the chat now. Um, to let us know your experience during the webinar. Um, and if there are no further questions, oh, we have one question. Uh, how can we contact you in person, Dr. Orkan, to discuss about embedding health literacy in school curriculum? Yeah, in fact, I really would be happy if as many of you would contact me and would have interest to address health literacy, in particular also organizational health literacy. Just write an email. Um, I can, let me just, um, post my email to the comment to the chat box so this is the best uh, this is the best way to reach me but i'm also on 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 uh, twitter or mastodon etc linkedin you can contact me there and we also have a a uh, working group on health literacy at the UFA, the European uh, Public Health Association. You can join us at the International Health Literacy Association, where we have an interest group on health literacy in uh, schools. And there is also a lot of uh, local work done in European countries. You can also join the SHE network. So there are many opportunities, or even our COVID health literacy network. So plenty, plenty, plenty of opportunities how to collaborate. And I really would be happy if as many of you contact me, as many of you as possible. That would be awesome. Okay. All right. Well, we are finishing maybe a few minutes early, but once again, thank you everybody for joining us and have a nice evening.